I find myself under the command of Xgeth, a Zerillion overlord known for his ruthlessness. My days are spent laboring on his freight ship, performing tasks that push my physical and mental limits to the edge. The concept of freedom has become a distant dream, overshadowed by the harsh reality of my existence. Life as a slave is grueling. Each day begins with the cold, metallic clang of the ship's alarms, signaling the start of another cycle of endless work. My duties vary from maintenance of the ship's engines to loading and unloading cargo at various ports. The work is monotonous, physically demanding, and never-ending. The only respite comes in the form of brief meals consisting of nutrient-rich but flavorless rations and short periods of rest in the cramped quarters I share with other slaves. The conditions aboard the ship are dire. The air is thick with the smell of oil and sweat and the constant hum of the engines serves as a relentless reminder of my confinement. My fellow slaves and I communicate sparingly, each of us lost in our thoughts, clinging to whatever shreds of hope we can find. We are watched closely by Xgeth's enforcers who do not hesitate to use violence to maintain order and productivity. Despite the oppression, whispers of rebellion and tales of distant worlds where slavery is abhorred begin to circulate among us. These stories ignite a spark within me, fueling a desire for freedom that I struggle to suppress. The risk of punishment for any sign of insubordination is high, yet the yearning for a life beyond these chains grows stronger each day. One such tale that captures my imagination speaks of a place called Earth, where beings called humans have fought for centuries to eradicate the blight of slavery. The concept of a society that values individual freedom and equality is alien to me, yet it offers a glimmer of hope in the darkness that has enveloped my life. Have you heard of the humans? I cautiously whisper to a fellow slave during a rare moment of privacy. Yes, I have. They say these humans do not tolerate the bondage of others. Can you imagine such a world, Talassia? The reply comes, filled with a mixture of skepticism and longing. The thought of a civilization where my kind could live free from oppression is both exhilarating and terrifying. The possibility of escape and finding refuge among these humans becomes an obsession that occupies my every waking moment. I begin to plot my escape, knowing that the chances of success are slim and the consequences of failure dire. The plan is simple yet fraught with danger. I intend to use the cover of a cargo delivery at a bustling spaceport to slip away from my captors. Disguising myself in stolen mechanics overalls, I aim to blend in with the crowd and find a place to hide until I can secure passage on a ship headed for unknown destinations with the faint hope of reaching Earth or any world where slavery is but a shadow of the past. The day of the escape arrives and my heart pounds with a mixture of fear and excitement. As the ship docks and the crew begins unloading the cargo, I seize my moment. Slipping into the flow of workers and port visitors, I make my way to a cantina known to be frequented by a diverse clientele. The plan is to remain unnoticed, just another face in the crowd, until I can find my opportunity for freedom. Inside the cantina, the air is filled with the cacophony of alien languages and the clinking of glasses. I keep my head down, avoiding eye contact, and find a secluded spot where I can observe without drawing attention to myself. The minutes stretch into what feels like hours as I wait, my mind racing with the possibilities of what lies ahead. It is in this state of heightened anxiety that I meet Commander Richard Fortescue, a human whose presence in the cantina is as unexpected as it is intriguing. His appearance is strikingly different from the species I am accustomed to, with less fur and a variety of facial features that speak to the diversity of his kind. Our initial interaction is awkward, marked by confusion and misunderstanding, but there is a kindness in his eyes that I have not seen in many cycles. Are you all right? You seem troubled, Commander Fortescue asks, his voice tinged with genuine concern. I am in a difficult situation. I admit the words feeling like a betrayal of my carefully guarded secret. We all carry our burdens, he responds, offering a smile that, despite the simplicity of the gesture, feels like a beacon of hope. In that moment, a connection is forged between us, a fragile bond built on the mutual recognition of each other's struggles. 
Little do I know, this chance encounter will mark the beginning of a journey that will challenge everything I believe about freedom, loyalty, and the strength of the spirit. As I sit in the dim light of the cantina surrounded by strangers yet feeling an unexpected sense of companionship with this human, I allow myself to dream. Perhaps, in this vast and often cruel galaxy, there is a place for someone like me, a place where the chains of the past can be broken and a new life forged in the light of freedom and hope. The day I decided to escape was like any other, filled with the usual labor and suppression under Xketh's watchful eyes. However, within me, a plan simmered, a desperate, dangerous attempt at freedom that had occupied my thoughts for cycles now. It was during a routine cargo delivery at a bustling spaceport that I saw my chance. The chaos and sheer volume of beings provided the perfect cover for my escape. Dressed in the overalls I had stolen from a service bay, I blended in with the ship's crew and dock workers. My heart raced with every step fearing detection at any moment. The heavy weight of the slave collar around my neck served as a constant reminder of what I was risking. Being caught would mean severe punishment or worse, death. But the thought of another cycle in chains was a fate I could no longer bear. I need to move the crates to Bay 6, I muttered to myself, mimicking the tasks of the crew, trying to look as inconspicuous as possible. My palms were sweaty, and my breathing was shallow, each breath a mix of fear and anticipation. The spaceport was a labyrinth of docks, ships, and endless streams of beings from across the galaxy. It buzzed with activity, the air filled with a cacophony of alien languages, the screeching of metal, and the hum of spacecraft. In this orchestrated chaos, I saw my narrow path to freedom. I kept my head down, avoiding eye contact, and made my way towards the cantina known for its diverse clientele. It was a strategic location, close to several exits and always crowded enough to provide cover. My plan was simple, to hide there until I could find a way off the station, away from Ksketh and his enforcers. As I entered the cantina, the change in atmosphere was immediate. The dim lighting and the murmur of conversations provided a stark contrast to the bright lights and noise of the docks. I scanned the room quickly, looking for a secluded spot where I could sit unnoticed. Finding a table in the corner, I sat down, my heart still racing from the fear of being followed. I ordered a drink, something cheap and inconspicuous, and tried to calm my racing thoughts. The minutes stretched into hours as I sat there, watching the door with a mixture of fear and hope. Every time it opened, I tensed, expecting Xketh's enforcers to come storming in. Is this seat taken? A voice asked, pulling me from my anxious reverie. I looked up to see a human standing there, looking at me with a curious expression. It was Commander Fortescue, though I did not know his name at the time. No, it's free, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. I was wary of engaging in conversation, afraid that any interaction might draw attention to me. But there was something about this human, a sense of kindness and understanding, that made me lower my guard. I haven't seen your kind around here before. Are you new to the station? He asked, taking a seat across from me. I, I'm just passing through, I answered, careful not to reveal too much. The conversation felt dangerous, yet there was a part of me that welcomed the chance to speak with someone, to feel a connection, however fleeting, in the midst of my desperation. The human nodded, sensing my reluctance to talk. Well, if you need any help, just let me know. The galaxy can be a daunting place, he offered with a smile. I nodded, unsure of how to respond. The offer of help from a stranger, especially a human, was unexpected. In that moment, I felt a glimmer of hope, a sense that perhaps not all was lost. As the hours passed, I remained in the cantina, watching and waiting for my chance to leave. The human, Commander Fortescue, stayed as well, occasionally making small talk, trying to ease the tension that hung around me like a shroud. When night fell and the cantina began to empty, I knew it was time to make my move. Thanking the human for his company, I stood up, my legs shaky from hours of sitting and the weight of the decision I was about to make. Good luck, Commander Fortescue said as I turned to leave. And remember, you're not alone in this galaxy. With those parting words, I stepped out into the night, my heart set on finding freedom or dying in the attempt. The escape was far from over, but for the first time in a long while, I felt a flicker of hope burning within me. 
After leaving the cantina, my mind was a whirlwind of thoughts and emotions. The brief interaction with the human who later introduced himself as Commander Richard Fortescue had left an unexpected impact on me. His presence at the cantina, the way he approached me with a blend of curiosity and respect, was something I was unprepared for. I had encountered humans before, but always from a distance, always as a slave observing her masters. But this was different. Commander Fortescue was unlike any being I had encountered. His demeanor was calm, his voice carried a warmth I was unfamiliar with, and his eyes held a depth of kindness that seemed genuine. Our conversation began with simple, cautious exchanges. What brings you to this corner of the galaxy? He inquired, his tone casual but interested. I'm just passing through, I replied, wary of revealing too much. The weight of the slave collar hidden beneath my overalls felt heavier with every word I spoke. He nodded as if understanding the unspoken words that hung between us. The galaxy is vast, full of wonders and dangers alike. It's easy to feel lost, he mused, his gaze drifting to the bustling crowd outside the cantina. I found myself drawn into the conversation despite the voice in my head urging caution. And what about you, human? What brings you to a place like this? I asked, my curiosity getting the better of me. Commander Fortescue smiled, a gesture that seemed to light up his entire face. Exploration, diplomacy, a bit of adventure, he listed, humans are relatively new to the galactic community. There's much we have to learn, many species we're yet to meet. The way he spoke of his species, with a sense of pride mixed with a humble acknowledgement of their place in the galaxy, intrigued me. It was a stark contrast to the arrogance and entitlement I had witnessed in other species, including my captors. Our paths are not so different, it seems, I remarked, the words slipping out before I could stop them. There was a sense of kinship in this shared journey of discovery, albeit from vastly different perspectives. Commander Fortescue leaned forward, his interest piqued. How so, he pressed gently, sensing there was more to my story than I was willing to share. I hesitated, torn between the urge to confide in this stranger and the ingrained caution that had kept me alive this long. The decision was made for me when the cantina's door swung open and a group of Xketh's enforcers stepped inside, their eyes scanning the room. Panic surged through me, my instinct to flee warring with the newfound sense of connection I felt with the human sitting across from me. Commander Fortescue noticed the change in my demeanor, his gaze following mine to the door. In that moment, he made a decision that would change the course of my life. Stay calm, he whispered, his voice steady and reassuring. I won't let them take you. Before I could respond, he stood, positioning himself between me and the enforcers, a protective gesture that spoke volumes. Can I help you, gentlemen? He asked, his tone polite but firm. The enforcers hesitated, taken aback by the human's intervention. They exchanged glances, unsure how to proceed. It was clear they had not expected to encounter resistance, especially not from a human. We're looking for someone, the lead enforcer grumbled, his gaze drifting towards me. Commander Fortescue shook his head. I'm afraid you're mistaken. This person is with me, under my protection, he stated, his posture unwavering. The standoff that followed was tense, a test of wills between the human commander and the enforcers. I watched in awe as Commander Fortescue held his ground, his confidence and authority evident in every word he spoke. Eventually, the enforcers retreated, muttering threats under their breath. As they left, Commander Fortescue turned to me, his expression softening. You're safe now, he assured me, but we should leave, just in case they decide to return. I nodded, still in shock from the encounter. Why did you help me? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Commander Fortescue smiled, a genuine expression that reached his eyes. Because it was the right thing to do, he answered simply, and because I believe no being should live in fear or chains. As we left the cantina together, I realized that my journey towards freedom had taken an unexpected turn. In Commander Richard Fortescue, I had found an unlikely ally, a beacon of hope in a galaxy that had shown me little kindness. Our encounter, brief as it was, had revealed a path forward, one that I never imagined possible. The night air felt different as we stepped outside, the stars above shining a little brighter. 
For the first time in a long while, I allowed myself to believe that freedom might be within reach, that there might be a place for me in this vast galaxy where I could live free from the shadows of my past. As we made our way through the dimly lit streets of the spaceport, the sense of relief I felt in the cantina began to wane, replaced by the familiar grip of fear and uncertainty. Commander Richard Fortescue, walking beside me, seemed to sense my growing anxiety. We need to find you a safe place, he said, his voice steady and reassuring. The spaceport at night was a different world, shadows and silence replacing the bustling chaos of the day. Every sound made me flinch, every shadow seemed to conceal danger. The weight of the hidden slave collar around my neck felt heavier with each step, a constant reminder of the life I was trying to escape. It wasn't long before my worst fears were realized. The sound of approaching footsteps broke the silence, rapid and purposeful. I froze, heart pounding, as a group of figures emerged from the shadows. They were Xketh's enforcers, their armor glinting faintly in the low light. There she is, one of them called out, pointing directly at me. The runaway slave. Panic surged through me, rooting me to the spot. Commander Fortescue stepped forward, positioning himself between me and the approaching enforcers. This person is under my protection, he declared, his voice calm but firm. The lead enforcer laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Do you know who you're dealing with, human? This is Xketh's property you're harboring. I am no one's property, I managed to say, my voice shaking with a mixture of fear and defiance. The enforcers paused, momentarily taken aback by my words. It was clear they were not used to their quarry speaking back let alone being defended by a human. You're making a mistake getting involved in this, human, the lead enforcer sneered, addressing Commander Fortescue. Hand her over and we'll forget you were part of this. Commander Fortescue stood his ground, his posture unyielding. I cannot, in good conscience, allow you to take her. She is a sentient being, deserving of respect and freedom, not enslavement. The standoff that ensued was tense, filled with the unspoken threat of violence. The enforcers were clearly used to intimidating their way to what they wanted, but they seemed uncertain how to proceed against the firm resolve of a human commander. It was then that I realized the gravity of the situation. Commander Fortescue was risking his own safety for mine, a gesture of solidarity that I had never experienced before. The thought that he and potentially his crew could suffer consequences because of me was unbearable. I appreciate what you're doing, but I can't let you get hurt because of me. I whispered to him, fear and gratitude mingling in my voice. Commander Fortescue glanced at me, a brief smile flashing across his face. We stand together in this, he said simply. You're not alone anymore. The enforcers, growing impatient, began to advance, their hands moving towards their weapons. It was clear that the situation was about to escalate into violence, a prospect that filled me with dread. Just as the tension reached its peak, a new voice cut through the night. Is there a problem here? The tone was authoritative, commanding immediate attention. A figure stepped into the light, revealing the insignia of a Galactic Federation officer. The enforcers halted, their aggression faltering under the scrutiny of Federation authority. These are internal matters, officer, the lead enforcer said, trying to maintain a semblance of control. Nothing for the Federation to concern itself with. The officer's gaze swept over us, pausing to assess the situation. I disagree. The Federation does not condone slavery or the pursuit of escaped slaves within its jurisdictions. The enforcers exchanged uneasy glances, the confidence in their stance waning. It was clear they were reluctant to challenge the Federation's authority directly. After a tense moment, the lead enforcer nodded curtly. We'll take our leave for now. With that, the group retreated into the shadows, their threat lingering in the air. As the immediate danger passed, I let out a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. The Federation officer gave us a nod, a silent acknowledgement, before disappearing back into the night. Commander Fortescue turned to me, his expression one of relief and determination. We should move quickly, find you a safe passage off the station. As we resumed our walk, the reality of what had just transpired settled in. I had come face to face with recapture, with the life I was so desperately trying to leave behind. 
but I had also experienced an unexpected act of kindness and protection from a human from Commander Richard Fortescue. In that moment, my resolve strengthened. The path to freedom was fraught with danger, but I was no longer alone. With allies like Commander Fortescue, perhaps there was hope for a future where I could live free from the shadows of enslavement. The Federation officer's departure left us with a fleeting sense of security, but we both knew the Enforcer's retreat was only temporary. Commander Fortescue and I hastened through the dimly lit alleys of the spaceport, the silence punctuated only by our quick footsteps. We need to find you a ship, he said, scanning our surroundings for any signs of pursuit. Despite the urgency, my mind was in turmoil. The prospect of freedom was so close, yet the shadows of my past loomed ever larger. The encounter with Xketh's enforcers had shaken me, bringing back memories of captivity I had fought hard to suppress. Our hurried escape was abruptly halted by a chillingly familiar voice. Going somewhere, to Lassia? The words slithered through the air, stopping us in our tracks. Sketh himself stood before us, flanked by more enforcers than before. The sneer on his face was one of cruel satisfaction, his eyes gleaming with malice. I must commend your bravery, human, for harboring a fugitive. But this, this is where your little rebellion ends. Commander Fortescue stepped forward, his stance protective. She is not a fugitive. She is a being with rights, and I will not stand by and watch those rights be trampled. Skethes' laughter was cold and devoid of humor. Rights? The only right she has is to serve her betters. And as for you, meddling in affairs far beyond your understanding will have consequences. The tension between them was palpable, a tangible force that seemed to charge the air. I could see the resolve in Commander Fortescue's eyes, a determination that mirrored my own desire for freedom. It doesn't have to end this way, Sketh. Let her go. Let all of them go, Commander Fortescue said, his voice steady, betraying no hint of the danger we were in. Naive to the end, Xketh sneered, signaling his enforcers. Take them. What happened next unfolded with the terrifying clarity of a nightmare. The enforcers advanced, their movements precise and coordinated. Commander Fortescue fought with a skill and ferocity that surprised me, each move calculated to protect not just himself but me as well. I was not idle. The years of oppression, the suppressed anger and desperation all found their outlet in that moment. I fought beside Commander Fortescue, my every strike fueled by the burning desire for freedom. The conflict was brutal and chaotic, a maelstrom of violence that I had never imagined I would be part of. We were outnumbered, but the determination to resist, to fight for something greater than ourselves, lent us strength. In the midst of the turmoil, I saw an opening. A split-second decision and I lunged at Sketh, my actions driven by a surge of adrenaline and a deep-seated need for retribution. The collision was jarring, but it gave Commander Fortescue the moment he needed to gain the upper hand. The fight reached a crescendo, a final clash that seemed to suspend time itself. And then, as quickly as it had begun, it was over. Sketh lay defeated, a stunned silence enveloping the scene. The remaining enforcers, leaderless and demoralized, hesitated. In that brief pause, the unmistakable sound of Federation reinforcements approached, their arrival heralding the end of the confrontation. Commander Fortescue and I stood amidst the aftermath, battered and bruised but unbroken. The reality of what had transpired was overwhelming, a mixture of disbelief and a dawning sense of liberation. You're free now, Talassia, Commander Fortescue said, his voice a comforting anchor in the storm of emotions that threatened to engulf me. The words were simple, but they carried the weight of a thousand promises. I looked around at the enforcers now in custody, Xketh's fallen form, and I realized the truth in his statement. I was free. We had fought against seemingly insurmountable odds, and we had emerged victorious. The path to true freedom was still fraught with challenges, but this victory, this moment, was a beacon of hope. It was a testament to the strength found in unity, in standing together against oppression. As the Federation officers secured the area, Commander Fortescue and I shared a look of mutual respect and understanding. We had forged a bond in the heat of battle, a bond that spoke of shared ideals and a common purpose. In that moment, I knew that my journey was far from over but I also knew that I would not have to face it alone. 
With allies like Commander Fortescue and the promise of a new beginning, the future seemed brighter, filled with possibilities I had never dared to dream of. The conflict had ended, but it was merely the first step in a larger battle. A battle for freedom, for the right to live as beings of worth and dignity. And it was a battle I was now ready to face, armed with newfound hope and the unwavering support of friends who believed in a cause greater than themselves. The silence that followed the clash was deafening. The spaceport, once a cacophony of alien noises and the hum of ships, now seemed to hold its breath. Around us, the defeated enforcers were rounded up by the Federation officers, their presence a stark reminder of the law that governed these stars. Sketh, once a figure of fear and authority, lay motionless, a testament to the price of freedom fought and won. Commander Richard Fortescue stood beside me, his gaze surveying the scene with a mix of relief and somber contemplation. The battle had taken its toll on him, visible in the weariness that lined his face and the bruises that marked his skin. Yet, his stance remained resolute, a beacon of strength amidst the chaos. You're free now, Talassia, he had said, his words echoing in my mind like a promise. I felt a surge of emotions, a mix of exhilaration and disbelief at the turn of events. Freedom, a concept so long desired yet seemingly unattainable, was now within my grasp, thanks to the bravery and kindness of this human. As the Federation officers concluded their work, Commander Fortescue turned to me, his expression one of sincere concern. We can't stay here, he said, his voice low. It's not safe for you, not after what's transpired. I nodded, understanding the gravity of his words. Sketh's defeat, though a victory for us, would not go unnoticed. Others might come seeking retribution, or worse, to reclaim the prize they believed they had lost. Come with me, Commander Fortescue continued, gesturing towards the direction of his ship. The HMS Endeavor is docked not far from here. We'll provide you with protection until we can figure out your next steps. The offer left me stunned. To be given not only the gift of freedom but also the promise of safety was more than I had ever dared to hope for. Why are you doing this? I asked, the question slipping out in a whisper. Why help me to this extent? Commander Fortescue smiled, a gentle, reassuring curve of his lips. Because it's the right thing to do, he said, echoing his words from our first encounter. And because I believe everyone deserves a chance at a better life. You fought hard for your freedom, Talassia. You deserve to enjoy it, free from fear. His words resonated within me, stirring a well of gratitude and newfound respect for this human who had become my unlikely ally. Together, we made our way to the HMS Endeavor, the ship that promised a haven in the storm that had become my life. As we boarded the Endeavor, I was met with curious glances from the crew. Their eyes held no judgment, only a silent understanding and a welcoming warmth that I found both surprising and comforting. Commander Fortescue introduced me to the crew, explaining the situation with a brevity that spoke of mutual respect and trust among them. You'll be safe here, he assured me as he showed me to a small but comfortable quarters. Take some time to rest and recover. We'll discuss your next steps when you're ready. As the door closed behind him, leaving me alone with my thoughts, I reflected on the journey that had brought me to this moment. The fear, the desperation, and the fleeting moments of hope that had culminated in a fight for my very soul. And now, against all odds, I stood on the threshold of a new beginning, protected by those who had once been strangers but were now my protectors, my allies. The offer of protection from Commander Fortescue and his crew was more than a simple act of kindness. It was a declaration of shared humanity, a recognition of my worth as an individual. It was a promise that I was no longer alone, that I had people willing to stand by me to fight for me. In the quiet of my quarters, the reality of my freedom began to truly sink in. The weight of the slave collar, now absent from my neck, seemed like a distant memory, a remnant of a life I was ready to leave behind. Ahead lay uncertainty, no doubt, but also the promise of choice, of a chance to carve out my path, guided by the light of newfound hope and the strength of newfound alliances. The battle was over, but my journey was just beginning. With the protection and support of Commander Fortescue and the crew of the HMS Endeavor, I dared to dream of a future where the chains of the past held no sway, where freedom was not just a fleeting moment but a lasting reality.
As I settled into the bed, the soft hum of the ship's engines a gentle lullaby, I closed my eyes, allowing myself to believe in the possibilities that lay ahead. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I slept not as a slave, but as a free being, cradled in the safety of a ship that sailed towards a horizon filled with hope. My first few days aboard the HMS Endeavor were a whirlwind of new experiences and challenges. The ship was unlike any place I had ever been, a marvel of human engineering and camaraderie that operated with a precision and warmth I found both astonishing and comforting. Commander Richard Fortescue had ensured my welcome aboard the ship, introducing me to the crew with a kindness that eased my initial apprehension. Each member of the crew, from the engineers to the navigators, greeted me with a nod of respect or a friendly smile, acknowledging my presence not as a former slave, but as a fellow being deserving of dignity and freedom. The gravity aboard the Endeavor was my first and most persistent challenge. Accustomed to the lighter gravity of Xketh's ship, I found myself awkwardly navigating the corridors of the Endeavor, often stumbling or misjudging my steps. The crew, noticing my difficulty, offered advice and support, teaching me how to move in a way that used the ship's gravity to my advantage rather than fighting against it. Easier if you bend your knees a bit and go with the flow, see? One of the engineers, a jovial man named Harris, demonstrated one afternoon as he noticed me struggling. Like you're part of the ship, not a passenger. I smiled, grateful for the tip, and found that with practice, my movements became less clumsy, more in tune with the rhythm of the endeavor. The technology aboard the ship was another aspect I had to acclimate to. Devices and consoles filled the bridge and other key areas, blinking and beeping in a symphony of lights and sounds that were initially overwhelming. Commander Fortescue took the time to explain some of the basic functions, ensuring I could communicate with the crew and access the ship's amenities without confusion. This is how you'll call for assistance if you need it, he explained, showing me a small device that could be activated with a simple press. And here, he continued, pointing to a screen on the wall of my quarters, you can access ship's updates and information. It's all quite user-friendly once you get the hang of it. Meals aboard the Endeavor were a communal affair, a time when the crew gathered to share food and stories in the mess hall. The variety and flavor of the dishes were a revelation to me so far removed from the bland rations I was accustomed to. The crew, noticing my initial hesitance, encouraged me to try different foods, sharing their own favorites and explaining the origins of each dish. Try this, Talassia, a navigator named Lee offered one evening, passing me a dish that smelled of spices and warmth. It's a specialty from my home planet. I think you like it. The camaraderie around the table, the easy banter and shared laughter was something I had never experienced. It filled a void within me, a hunger for connection and belonging that I hadn't even realized was there. But it wasn't just the physical adjustments that marked my early days on the endeavor, it was the emotional journey as well. The sense of safety and protection afforded by the ship and its crew allowed me to begin processing the years of captivity and oppression I had endured. The nights, once filled with fear and uncertainty, now brought rest and reflection. Commander Fortescue, ever perceptive, noticed the change in me, the gradual lifting of the weight I had carried for so long. How are you finding life aboard the Endeavor? He asked one day as we stood gazing out at the stars from the observation deck. It's more than I could have hoped for, I replied, my voice thick with emotion. I'm learning so much, not just about the ship and its operations, but about myself. I feel like I'm finally beginning to heal, to look forward instead of back. He nodded, understanding in his eyes. That's all any of us can hope for, Talassia. A chance to move forward, to grow. You're not just adjusting to life aboard the Endeavor. You're building a new life for yourself. And we're all here to support you in that journey. His words resonated with me, affirming the sense of belonging and purpose that had begun to take root in my heart. Aboard the HMS Endeavor, I was not merely a passenger or a former slave. I was part of a community, a family united by shared values and goals. As I continued to adapt to life aboard the Endeavor, I found myself not just adjusting, but thriving. 
The support and kindness of the crew, the leadership of Commander Fortescue, and the sense of safety and belonging aboard the ship had given me a foundation upon which to rebuild my life. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I allowed myself to dream of a future filled with possibilities, guided by the light of newfound hope and the unwavering support of those who had become not just allies, but friends. The journey ahead was uncertain, but I faced it with a sense of optimism and determination, knowing that aboard the HMS Endeavor, I had found not just refuge, but a home. As days turned into weeks aboard the HMS Endeavor, I found myself seamlessly blending into the life and routine of the ship. The crew had become like a family to me, offering support and camaraderie that filled the void left by years of isolation and captivity. It was during one of our routine gatherings in the mess hall that Commander Richard Fortescue presented a new mission, one that would change the course of our journey and, unknowingly, my own life. We've received intel about a Zerillion slave ship operating near the outer sectors, Commander Fortescue began, his voice capturing the immediate attention of the crew. It's believed to be transporting slaves to a mining colony on the fringes of Federation space. The room fell silent, the gravity of his words hanging heavily in the air. The thought of more being suffering the same fate I had escaped from reignited a fire within me, a burning desire to help, to make a difference. We have an opportunity to intercept the ship and liberate those aboard, he continued, his gaze meeting each of ours, assessing our reactions. It's a risky operation, but I believe it's the right thing to do. I won't order anyone into this without their full consent. This is a volunteer mission. Murmurs of agreement and determination filled the room, the crew's unity evident in their shared resolve. My heart swelled with pride and a newfound sense of purpose. I knew, without a doubt, that I wanted to be part of this mission. Commander, I spoke up, my voice steady despite the emotions swirling within me. I want to help. I, I know what it's like to be on one of those ships. Maybe I can make a difference. Commander Fortescue's gaze softened as he looked at me, understanding and respect reflected in his eyes. Talassia, your courage and willingness to help are commendable. But I need you to understand the risks. This won't be easy, and it could be dangerous. I understand, Commander, I replied, my decision unwavering. I've lived through the darkness of those ships. If there's a chance I can help bring light to others still trapped in that nightmare, then I must try. The following days were a blur of preparation and planning. The Endeavor's crew worked tirelessly, refining our strategy and ensuring that every detail was accounted for. Commander Fortescue included me in the planning sessions, valuing my insight and experience. It was both empowering and humbling to be a part of something so much bigger than myself, to contribute to a cause that aimed to dismantle the very chains that had once bound me. We'll be approaching the slave ship from the asteroid belt, using it as cover, Commander Fortescue explained during one of our strategy meetings. Stealth will be our ally here. To Lassia, your knowledge of Zerillion ship layouts will be invaluable. We need to identify the holding areas quickly and secure them. I pored over the ship's schematics, memories of my own captivity guiding my understanding of the layout. The holding areas are typically located near the lower decks, away from the main crew quarters, I pointed out, marking the areas on the holographic display. If we can disable the internal security systems, we'll have a better chance of reaching the prisoners without alerting the entire ship. The crew listened intently, their trust in my knowledge both humbling and empowering. Together, we fine-tuned our approach, each of us committed to the success of the mission. The night before the operation, Commander Fortescue pulled me aside, his expression serious. Talassia, I need you to promise me something, he said, his tone firm but laced with concern. If things go south, I need you to focus on getting back to the endeavor. Your safety is paramount. I nodded, understanding the weight of his request. I promise, Commander, I assured him, the promise binding me not only to him but to the crew that had become my family. As the Endeavor slipped silently through the darkness of space towards our destination, I stood on the observation deck, gazing out at the stars. The vastness of the galaxy stretched out before me, a reminder of the infinite possibilities that lay beyond the confines of captivity and oppression. The mission we were about to undertake was more than a mere operation. 
It was a beacon of hope, a stand against the darkness that sought to enslave and diminish the spirit of those it captured. And as the endeavor raced towards that distant light, I knew that we were not just a crew but a symbol of resistance, a testament to the enduring power of hope and the unbreakable will of those who fight for freedom. The day of the rescue operation dawned like any other in the vastness of space, yet the air aboard the HMS Endeavor was charged with a palpable sense of anticipation and resolve. As we neared the coordinates of the Zerillion slave ship, I felt a tumult of emotions swirling within me. Fear, anger, and an overwhelming desire to make a difference ward for dominance. But above all, there was hope, a flickering flame that had been kindled in the darkest recesses of my past and now burned brightly, fueled by the prospect of liberating others from the chains I had once worn. Approaching target, announced Lee, the navigator, her voice steady but tinged with the gravity of our mission. The crew was poised, each member focused on their role, the unity and determination palpable in the silent nods and clenched jaws. Commander Fortescue stood at the helm, his gaze fixed on the viewscreen, where the silhouette of the Zerillion ship began to take shape against the backdrop of stars. Remember, our priority is the safety of the prisoners. Stealth is key. Talassia, are you ready? I nodded, my throat tight with emotion. I'm ready, Commander, I managed to say, my voice stronger than I felt. The memories of my own captivity, the despair and helplessness surged within me, lending me a resolve I had never known I possessed. As the endeavor stealthily maneuvered through the asteroid belt, cloaking us from the slave ship's sensors, the tension aboard our vessel mounted. The silence was punctuated only by the occasional orders and confirmations, each crew member a vital link in the chain of our operation. Then, with a precision born of countless drills and unwavering focus, we made our move. The Endeavor's boarding party, myself included, launched in a shuttle, the void of space swallowing us as we made our silent approach towards the unsuspecting slave ship. The breach was swift, our team moving with practice deficiency to disable the ship's internal sensors and security systems. My heart pounded in my chest as we navigated the dimly lit corridors, my every sense heightened, memories guiding my steps. We're near the holding area, I whispered, leading the way towards the bowels of the ship where I knew the prisoners would be kept. The stench of despair and confinement hit me long before we reached the cells, a visceral reminder of the cruelty and inhumanity we were there to combat. The sight that met our eyes as we breached the holding area was heart-wrenching. Beings of various species, their eyes wide with a mix of fear and hope, huddled in the cramped, dimly lit space. The conditions were deplorable, a stark testament to the callous disregard for life that the slave trade embodied. We're here to help, Commander Fortescue announced, his voice cutting through the murmur of confused voices. You're safe now. As the crew set to work unlocking the cells, I moved among the prisoners, offering words of reassurance, my own experiences lending empathy and understanding to my gestures and gaze. The initial wariness in their eyes soon gave way to dawning realization and relief as the reality of their liberation set in. The operation, while fraught with risk and the shadow of potential discovery, proceeded with the precision and success that spoke volumes of the crew's dedication and skill. One by one, the prisoners were escorted to our shuttle, their shackles left behind, discarded symbols of their newfound freedom. As the last of the prisoners was secured aboard our shuttle, Commander Fortescue turned to me, a somber satisfaction in his eyes. Well done, Talassia. Let's get these people to safety. The journey back to the Endeavor was a blur, the shuttle filled with the soft murmur of voices and the occasional sob of relief. I sat among the liberated, their gratitude and disbelief a mirror to my own emotions. We had done it. We had pierced the darkness of captivity with a beacon of hope and defiance. As the Endeavor welcomed us back, the former prisoners stepping into the light of the hangar bay, I felt a surge of pride and fulfillment. This mission, this daring rescue in the vast expanse of space, had been more than a mere operation. It was a testament to the resilience of the spirit, a declaration that even in the darkest corners of the galaxy, there were those willing to fight for the light. I stood beside Commander Fortescue as the former prisoners disembarked, their faces alight with the first glimmers of freedom. 
Thank you, I said, my voice barely a whisper, yet carrying the weight of my gratitude and newfound purpose. Commander Fortescue smiled, placing a reassuring hand on my shoulder. No, Dalassia. Thank you. Today, you helped change the course of many lives. And that's something truly remarkable. As the former prisoners were led away to be cared for and debriefed, I looked out at the stars, their light shining down on us, a silent witness to the courage and compassion that had unfolded within the cold metal confines of the endeavor. In that moment, I knew that my journey was far from over. But with each step, each act of defiance against the darkness, we were weaving a tapestry of light, one that stretched across the galaxy, binding us all in a shared quest for freedom and dignity. In the quiet aftermath of the rescue operation, as the HMS Endeavor slipped silently through the cosmos, I found myself in the observation deck, gazing out at the endless expanse of stars. Each one seemed to twinkle with a message of hope, a reminder of the vast, untamed beauty of the universe that I was now free to explore. The weight of my past, the chains of my former captivity, felt like distant shadows dispelled by the light of newfound freedom and the warmth of the crew that had become my family. Quite a sight, isn't it? Commander Richard Fortescue's voice pulled me from my reverie. He stood beside me, his presence both comforting and empowering. It's incredible, I replied, my voice tinged with wonder. I never imagined I'd see the galaxy like this as a free being. He nodded, understanding the depth of my words. Freedom has a way of changing one's perspective. It's not just the absence of chains, but the opportunity to choose your own path. His words resonated with me, echoing the tumult of thoughts and emotions that swirled within. The rescue mission had not only liberated the captives aboard the Zerillion ship, but had also freed a part of me that had been locked away, silenced by years of oppression and fear. I've been thinking about what comes next, I began, turning to face him. For so long, my only goal was survival, escaping the darkness that had enveloped my life. But now, with freedom within my grasp, I find myself pondering a new path forward. Commander Fortescue listened intently, his gaze encouraging me to continue. I want to help others who are still trapped in the shadows, still waiting for a beacon of hope to pierce their darkness. I want to be part of the light that guides them to freedom, I said, the words flowing from a place of deep conviction. A smile spread across Commander Fortescue's face, a reflection of pride and support. That's a noble path, Talassia, and you won't be walking it alone. The Endeavor and her crew will be with you every step of the way. The affirmation of his support, the promise of companionship on the journey ahead, filled me with a sense of purpose and belonging. The Endeavor, once a mere vessel of refuge, had become the foundation upon which I could build a new life, one dedicated to the fight against the darkness that sought to enslave and diminish the spirit of the galaxy's inhabitants. In the days that followed, as the former captives began to heal and share their stories, I saw reflections of my own past in their eyes. Each tale of suffering and resilience added another layer to my resolve, reinforcing my commitment to the cause of freedom and justice. We've charted a course to a neutral station, Commander Fortescue informed me one evening as we reviewed the ship's navigational plans. It's a safe haven for those seeking refuge from oppression. We'll be escorting our rescued friends there, ensuring they have the support they need to start anew. The decision to accompany the former captives, to stand by them as they took their first tentative steps into a life of freedom, felt like a closing of one chapter and the beginning of another. It was a tangible expression of the Endeavor's mission and by extension, my own. As the station came into view, a beacon of hope amidst the sea of stars, I felt a profound sense of accomplishment and anticipation. The journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, no doubt, but it was a journey worth taking, a path worth walking. The former captives disembarked at the station, each step they took away from the endeavor a testament to their courage and the promise of a better future. As they walked into the embrace of the station's welcoming arms, I realized that this was but the first of many missions, many rescues that the endeavor and I would undertake. Commander Fortescue stood beside me, watching the scene unfold. There's much work to be done, Talassia. But together, we'll light up the darkest corners of the galaxy, one star at a time. I turned to him, my heart full of gratitude and determination. 
Together, I echoed my gaze returning to the stars. The galaxy stretched out before us, vast and filled with untold stories, waiting for us to write our own chapter of hope, freedom, and unyielding defiance against the forces that sought to bind and break. The path forward was clear, illuminated by the collective resolve of those who dared to dream of a galaxy where every being had the right to choose their destiny free from the shackles of oppression. And as the HMS Endeavor set a course for the next mission, I knew that I was exactly where I was meant to be, standing on the precipice of a new life, a new purpose, guided by the light of freedom and the unwavering support of my new family.